Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game, Korra Rise of an Empire, designed by the Headquarter Simulation Club and published by Yellow, who helped sponsor this video. Here we're going to ancient Greece as leader of a city-state with all the responsibilities that go with it. Will you focus on military strength to aid your conquests, trade to ensure your wealth grows, development to expand the capabilities of your realm, or any one of the other options vying for your attention? While you decide, your opponents are growing their own cities, so choose wisely and join me at the table as we learn how to play. To set up, have each player collect one of these city boards to set in front of themselves. In this video, we'll assume we have two players returning the extras to the box. Then give every player one of these city tiles randomly, which they'll slot into this area of their board. You now collect the dice, wooden markers, achievement tokens, victory point token, and seven action tiles in your chosen color. And the tiles will show your color on their banner here. Place these wooden markers into the bottom spaces of these tracks on your city board that match their shapes, with a single die set below them here. Then in the very bottom space of your city tile, set this triangle marker. Now place this central board in the middle of the play area and examine the symbols in this area here. These are known as knowledge spaces and you'll set what are known as knowledge tokens onto each one. Just be sure that the spaces that show a laurel with their symbol also get a token showing a laurel as well. These are known as major knowledge and these are minor. Also be sure to set one of each matching major knowledge token in these bottom spaces as well. It will look like this when you're done and then you set the remaining minor knowledge tokens into a supply near the board. Also by the board, create a supply for these philosophy and drachma tokens and then have each player collect four of them. On these tracks of the central board, each person now sets their matching wooden token into the space that's shaded. Everyone then sets their victory point marker, which shows this symbol, onto the zero space of this victory point track, putting their victory point token nearby. We'll now use the cards with this back to create our event deck, and you'll need to find and reveal the two that have this symbol on the green fabric portion of their back. You'll then set the one called Conquest of the Persians face down to create the bottom of the event deck. Then shuffle these other events, dealing seven of them face down on top of it and returning the rest unseen back to the box. Then put this set aside growing population card on top of the stack. And then this created deck you'll place by the board. The cards with this back make up the politics deck, which you shuffle, dealing five to each player and then setting the rest by the board. Each player looks at their own card secretly and then picks one to keep, putting it face down in front of themselves. And once everyone is ready, they then pass the rest of their cards to the player on their left. You now examine the four cards you just received, pick one of those to keep, put it face down in front of you, and again, once everyone's ready, you pass those remaining cards and you keep doing this back and forth until eventually you're handed one card, which you'll add to the others you have selected, and this will complete your starting hand. And we'll learn more about politics cards and why you might want certain ones a little bit later. Now have each player resolve the text found beside this wooden token on their board, and by the end of this video, we'll be able to interpret each one. But as an example, an outlined owl is the symbol for drachma, so this player would gain four at this time. I'll also mention that at any time while playing, you can trade in five of these silver tokens for one gold token, which is worth five silver ones. And of course, you can always do the opposite. You now pick a random person to be the start player, and that's the setup. In Korra, Rise of an Empire, you and the other players will be making decisions about where to assign your focus. Tax collection for money? Military for conquests? Perhaps politics and philosophy will draw your attention. And every decision will grow your city in some way while your opponents try to grow theirs, all in an effort to get the most victory points by the end. The game is played over a series of nine rounds, and each round is broken into seven phases, starting with the event announcement. Here, the starting player reveals the top card of the event deck, reading its text aloud. Now, normally this will have an effect that is resolved later in what is known as the event phase, as we'll see. But there is one exception. The very first event, which is always this one, called Growing Population. And it takes effect in the dice phase, so we'll discuss this then. 
With the event revealed, we now move on to the tax phase, where players will check their personal boards. Here, each person gains a number of drachma from the supply equal to the level of their token on this tax track. So no one would get anything for now, but let's say it was a later round and my marker was here. In that case, I'd gain two drachma. Now it's time for the dice phase, and this is broken into four steps that all players perform at the same time. And the first step is to roll your two dice. Each player also has a third die that's locked on their board right now, so you won't roll it. The player who rolls the lowest sum total on their dice is now the new first player for this round. And if there's a tie for the lowest roll, the start player is the tied one closest to whoever was previously the start player before in clockwise order. So, for example, if these two players had tied and this person was the start player last time, they would be the start player again this time. Also, in the very first dice phase of the game, you'll resolve this event now, which says that any player who rolled a sum total of four or less on their dice gains one of these philosophy tokens, which is represented by this symbol. And we'll see how these work a little later. Next, every player collects their seven action tiles and secretly assigns one of them face down to each of their dice, placing the die above their chosen tile and ensuring that the unchosen tiles remain separate and hidden. Once everyone is ready, you then reveal your chosen tiles, flipping them over but keeping them beside their related dice. The final step is to compare the values of your dice to the values printed on the tiles you've chosen for them. If the die value is equal to or greater than the number on the action tile, like we see in this case, nothing happens, which is good. But if the value on the die is less than the number on the action tile, you must now move your citizen's marker down a number of spaces on this track equal to the difference. If you can't, that is, if you can't pay the full amount of citizens to make up that difference, then you don't lose any citizens. But instead, you must set aside the tile that you picked for that die and put it with your other unchosen tiles. You won't get to use it this round. So as you can see, the higher the value of your rolls, the easier it will be to play higher valued tiles. But even if you get a low roll, you might still be able to use a higher tile if you have the citizens to spend. And with that understood, it's now time to move on to the action phase. Here, the revealed action tiles will be resolved in order of their value, starting with any zero value tiles. Only players who revealed those will resolve them. Then you resolve any revealed value one tiles, and then value two, and so on. Now to save time, all players who played the same numbered tiles can resolve them at the same time, except for the military tile, which is tile number four. This one must be resolved in turn order if more than one player chose it. And I should make clear, the effects of your chosen actions are optional. You never have to apply any effects on them that you don't want to. And with that understood, let's go through each one of the tiles and see how they work. When resolving this tile, you gain one philosophy token as shown by this symbol, and we'll see how these can be used a little later. This is the legislation tile, and resolving it first gains you three citizens. When you gain citizens, advance your marker here on this track, and as we saw earlier, these are used during the dice phase to help you resolve action tiles higher than the value of the die you assigned to it. But there's an interesting catch to gaining citizens this way. If you ever gain enough citizens that you would go beyond the 15th space, keep track of how many extra you have because you can then spend those extras on other actions you might perform this round, adjusting your token accordingly as you spend them. However, if you still have more than 15 citizens at the end of the action phase, you must move the token to the 15th space losing any of those extras. But that's not all. After gaining the three citizens, you're then told to draw two cards from the politics deck, choosing one to keep and putting the other on the bottom of the deck. There's no limit to the number of politics cards you can hold in your hand, and we'll see how these are used later. But now let's move on to resolving the culture action tile. Resolving culture instructs us to gain victory points, which is this symbol, equal to our culture level, which is this symbol. Your culture level is represented by the matching shaped token on this track. And the level is shown by the value over here on its left. So here we'd gain one victory point. If the token had been here, then we'd gain three victory points. Anytime you gain victory points, you advance your marker here on the victory point track. 
And if you ever go all the way around past 89 points, which is this final space, you keep going as you gain more points, but you also collect this victory point tile in your color to note that you've banked 90 points as you continue around the track. So just keep this in front of you. Now let's look at the trade tile. With this action, you gain one drachma more than your current economy level, which is represented by this symbol. So we check our economy level on our personal board, which is found here, and currently our marker is by level one, and since we gain one extra from our current level, that means we collect a total of two drachma. Then it says you can spend five drachma to buy a single minor knowledge token of any type from the supply, which is represented by this symbol. These are the three types of knowledge tokens, and when you buy one, just place it in front of you, and we'll see how these are used a little later. I should also mention that the token supplies for knowledge, philosophy, and drachma tokens are not meant to be limited. So if you ever run out of any, just use a suitable replacement. In fact, these are the official metal core coins that you can pick up separately. This is the military action tile, and it tells us to gain troops, which are represented by this symbol, equal to our military level, which is represented by this symbol. So we check our military level, which is based on the location of our marker here on this track, which is currently at level one. So we'd move our token on this troops track up by that amount. Now, as we saw with the citizens track, you're allowed to temporarily exceed 15 with this action, spending the extra during this action, as we'll see. But if you're still above 15 by the end of this action, you must then move your marker down to 15. Next, as it says here, after adjusting your troops, you may then take one explore action. To explore, pick any one knowledge token on the board here, and it really can be any one of them. You don't have to do these in a particular order. You just have to ensure that your current troop level is equal to or greater than the value showing to the right of the token that you've selected. If so, then you collect the token, adding it to your personal supply, but then you must lose troops equal to the value by the related skull symbol. So here we'd lose two troops, moving our marker two spaces down on this track. Some knowledge spaces, like this one, might have another related benefit listed with it here, and if so, you gain this at that time as well. So now we would take two drachma. Remember, I said you can pick any one knowledge token with the explore action. However, if you pick this Persepolis area to explore, this actually has three tokens, but is counted as a single space. So if you have 15 troops, as shown here, you can pick it to gain all three of these tokens at once. But again, normally, you may only take one token with the explore action. And we'll see how knowledge tokens are used a little later. Now though, let's see how the politics action tile works. This tile lets you play one politics card from your hand, and let's say I'm holding this one. To play a politics card, you must first have any of the knowledge tokens showing in its upper right hand corner. It doesn't matter if they are minor or major tokens, and you don't have to spend these tokens, you just have to have them. If so, this requirement is fulfilled. If the card has a drachma cost showing in the top left hand corner, you must also pay that back to the supply as well. As long as you can satisfy those requirements, if any, you can then play the card face up in front of you where it will stay for the rest of the game. And there are three main types of politics cards which you can distinguish by their color and symbol found in this area. So let's go through each of these types and see how they work. A yellow card has a lightning bolt and it means that as soon as you play it, you resolve its effect printed here as much as you can. It won't have any further effect, but you still leave it face up in front of you for the rest of the game. A purple card will show an infinity symbol, and this has an ongoing effect that remains active for the rest of the game. And any time its condition is fulfilled, you resolve its effect. The last type of politics card is a red card with a victory point symbol. And this has an end game effect, which will do nothing until the very end of the game, as we'll see. But for now, let's move on to the next type of action tile. This one lets you unlock the next development on your city tile. Your developments are here and you start the game with just the first one. To unlock the next one, you must have any knowledge tokens that it shows here. It doesn't matter if you have the major or minor versions of them, and you don't spend them, you just have to have them. So in this case, we do. You must also pay any drachma it shows, in this case one which will return to the supply, and then we can advance our marker up, making its effect active 
along with any from the levels below. And each effect has a symbol on their right. And these work just like the matching symbols on politics cards. A lightning effect happens once when it's unlocked, an infinity effect is ongoing, and a scoring effect resolves at the very end of the game. And those are all of the possible types of action tiles and how you resolve them. Now keep in mind there's also all kinds of different politics cards and development effects, but we're not going to go through each of those as how they work is described on them. But if you have any questions about them while playing, you'll find their symbols explained here on this page of the rulebook. Once all of the action tiles that players revealed have been resolved, it's now time to move on to the progress phase. Here, starting with the first player and going clockwise, each person may choose a single track on their city board to improve. Your tracks are here, and to improve one of them, you must first pay the drachmas showing in the space that you want to advance to. So in this case, I'd have to spend two of my drachma. I could then advance this military token upwards one space. You then also gain the reward showing by the arrow that you just advanced past. In this case, it says to add one to my glory, which is represented by this laurel symbol, so I'd advance my marker here one space. We won't go through all the various benefits that you'll find here, as again, they're shown on that page in the rulebook I mentioned earlier if you have any questions. But I should point out this one. After you advance your culture token past this symbol, it means you've unlocked your spare die here. So you collect it, and in the future, you'll roll it with your other dice during the dice phase. And that means you'll be assigning three action tiles per round, not just two. I should also mention that some card effects or other benefits might allow you to advance on the tracks more than once during a single round. But unless one of those effects applies, you can only advance one space during this phase. And next, we come to the event resolution phase. Here you resolve the effects on the event card that was revealed at the beginning of the round. Now, the first event of the game is the exception, as it's always resolved in the dice phase. But here's an example of one that would normally be resolved now. And I want to point out that if an effect on an event targets a player with the most or least military, as this one does, only those players will resolve the effect. And if there's a tie, it affects all of those tied players. On the other hand, other events, like this one, will target all of the players. And now we come to the final phase of a round, Achievement. There are five spaces for achievements on the central board, and during this phase, if an achievement is empty and any player satisfy its requirements, they can claim it by placing their matching token into its space. This means that more than one player can claim the same achievement during a round. But once an achievement has any number of tokens on it, it may not be claimed in future rounds. So let's see how each of these work. To claim this achievement, you must have at least 10 victory points on the score track, and you'll see this border around that value on the track as a reminder of this. With this achievement, you need to be at least at level 12 or higher on the citizen track. And again, you'll find that border helping you remember that this is one of the achievements. For this one, you need to be at level 6 or higher on the troop track. And here, you need to be at level 4 or higher on your economy track. Finally, for this achievement, you need to have at least three politics cards in play, meaning that they're face up in front of you. Each time you claim an achievement, if you're the only player who claimed it, then you get to choose to either go up one space on the glory or taxes track. But if more than one player gained the achievement during the round, each of those players just goes up one space on the taxes track. Once you earn an achievement, you can never lose it, even if you no longer meet its requirements later. And remember, once an achievement has a token or tokens on it, no one else can claim it later. Now, with the achievement phase over, that brings us to the end of the round. And then a new round would begin by flipping the next event over. But there is still one thing that can happen during a round that we haven't explained. Spending philosophy tokens. Any philosophy tokens you have can be used in one of three different ways, and you'll find reminders of these different methods here on the bottom of your personal board. During the third phase, or phase C, where the dice were rolled and tiles assigned to them, you can spend as many philosophy tokens as you like, and for each one, you increase your marker on the citizen's track by three spaces. And you can do this even if you don't intend to spend any of those citizens this round. Alternatively, during the actions phase when resolving a politics or development tile, you can spend two philosophy tokens to temporarily ignore one knowledge token requirement. 
As an example, let's say I wanted to play this politics card. Now, normally I would need a red and a blue knowledge token. I have the red knowledge token, but not the blue one. However, I can spend these two philosophy tokens to ignore this blue token requirement. Remember, during the progress phase, normally you can spend drachma to advance one of these tokens up one space. But as it shows here, during this phase, you can also spend as many tokens as you like, and for each one spent, you can move up one extra level on any track of your choice. But you still have to pay any of the required drachma costs. So those are all of the things that can happen during a round. And you'll go round by round until eventually you come to the end of the ninth round, which will have been the round where the Conquest of Persians event was revealed. And with the final round complete, you then move on to final scoring. Here you add any scoring effects from unlocked developments on your city tile to the points you already have on the score track. Also add any scoring you gain from end of game effects on politics cards you have played in front of you. Finally, gain points equal to your glory level on this track, multiplied by the number of major knowledge tokens you collected, which are the tokens with the laurel wreath symbol around them. So as the blue player, if I had collected a total of four major knowledge tokens, four times five means I get 20 extra points. The player with the most points wins. And in the case of a tie, the tied player with the most drachma wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. And that's everything you need to know to play Korra Rise of an Empire. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page of BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.